looking at me right now, you can tell like this is kind of flat. The scene doesn't look very good. I know. But with just a simple change, we can make this look really good. Whoa. Now that looks interesting. I can't do a whole lot sitting here and just talking to you. I gotta move around and stuff. So, so I'm gonna bring in a stunt double. Whoa, all right. Okay, so Zach's gonna take care of, you know, some modeling for me so that I can move around and change the light and show you guys a few techniques that are really gonna help your videos. The camera is kind of uh, up above the eye line and about 45 degrees from the subject and it's shooting down on his face so we have like this loop you can see on the side of his nose it's casting a little bit of a loop shadow towards his cheekbone that's called loop lighting and then if we take the light and we move it exactly 90 degrees so we're shooting him from the side there's this line that goes straight down the middle of his face and this is what we're gonna call split lighting. Split lighting is really good to create a super dramatic effect. Um, and you can tell just like, it's a very harsh straight line right down the middle of his face. We can counteract that with something called a bounce or a reflector. So you'll notice if we take this reflector and we just kind of hold it and we use it to bounce a little bit of light on that dark side of his face, you can see that it helps just kind of bring up that shadow a little bit so it's not as harsh. When you're bouncing light and you're trying to fill in the darkness, that's, that's actually called fill. So right off the bat, that's two lighting techniques that we're using only one light. Don't worry, there's more. Here's another one. So if we take the light and we bring it pretty much right by where the camera is, okay? And then we're gonna lift it up up and up and up. If you look at the bottom of his nose, like right under his nose, that little bit of a shadow there looks like a butterfly, right? And so this is called butterfly lighting or paramount lighting. Paramount lighting is something that actually Paramount Pictures used a lot back in the day to shoot their actresses because it, it is really flattering for the, for the females. Zach doesn't really have a defined cheekbone, but so it'll define the cheekbone a little bit, soften the uh, shadow underneath the nose, and then we get this dimension underneath his chin. If you're one of those people who like, take a picture from up high because I don't want him to see like my chin, uh, this is a great kind of lighting to use to get rid of the, uh, the double chin, the old double chin. Okay, so that's paramount or butterfly lighting. So let's go back to split lighting a little bit because this, and this is one of my favorite ones, Rembrandt. If we drop the light back down just above the eye line, so we're shooting down, you don't ever wanna shoot up because it makes it look really weird. So if we go back to loop lighting, right? And we just take it a little farther towards the side, we create something called Rembrandt lighting. Super dramatic, you can see that there, it creates this triangle on the cheekbone. And you'll see a lot of this in like major motion pictures, movie posters, anywhere where they wanna create a super dramatic, moody effect. We're in here with the lights off, but what, if it, what does it look like when we have all the lights on and there's no like depth and dimension here? Let's see what that looks like. So right off the bat, we can tell that Zach is backlit, okay? Because these lights, these lights back here are just shining down behind him. There's no real light on the front of his face. So in the camera, you can see that our subject is actually darker than the background. If Zach was very well lit all throughout the room and everything's the same, that's called flat lighting. You may want flat lighting for the purposes of like a instructional video or a tutorial or something like that, but if you want to like get real cinematic and make it look really good, you got to kill the lights and dial in your exposure just right 
and then you get this really cool looking moody uh, dramatic effect. All of those techniques that you can use with only a single light. But there are some things about that single light that you might need to modify to create those soft shadows. Basically diffusion is just this white cloth that kind of breaks up that harsh directional light. You can see that Zach now has a very <laughs> harsh light. All the shadows on his face are super sharp. There's not that soft shadow that we had before. And that's because we're diffusing the light, which means we're trying to break up the harshness and make the shadows softer. So let's talk about rim lighting. Rim lighting is going to be a light that we place to light up the, the rear or the top hairline and the shoulders of our subject to help pull him away from the background. We want this lower than our key light, which is our main light source. So I'm gonna have to put this about 15%. In the shot, we have a light that you can actually see. So it, this is our practical light, and it's serving as a rim light because it's lighting up the uh, outside of Zach, pulling him off the background. And yeah, I mean, it looks kind of messy in the shot, but let's say, let's say this shot called for something like that and it looks a bit more industrial. We still have the Rembrandt lighting, so we've got the triangle underneath his eye falling on his cheekbone, and we have this really cool light source happening in the background. We could even take that up. Hold that for a sec. We could take it up a little bit so it kind of is just hanging out at the top of the frame. I can't really see it from here, but it kind of looks pretty cool. But what if we want to color our lights? And this is, where, this is where accent lighting comes in really nice. I don't know if you've noticed yet in the shot, but if you can look behind the couch, okay, I set a little accent light back there, and it is actually covered with a colored gel. Here's what it looks like off, and here's what it looks like on. Not a big difference, but it does offer some contrast between the wall and the couch, because the couch is almost right up against the wall, it helps bring the couch out from the wall just a little bit. Here's a little bit of a hack. So the way I'm coloring the light is with something called a gel, but this isn't a official gel. This is a little hack that I got for you guys. You can go to like any craft store and buy this clear, it's like plastic wrap, cellophane. You can use it to, for gift wrapping. Super cheap, maybe $5 for this roll or less. And then you can just use it to color your light. So you can take a white light and make it blue. Or if you find any of the other colors, you want a warm light, find an orange color, wrap it in the orange cellophane, and then you have a really warm light. So let's show you what, we have this white cool light on this side. So let's contrast Zach with a white light on the left and a, and a, a warm light on the other side. This is what that looks like. No fill, warm fill. No fill, you get the idea. So you can do all of this with pretty much any light. I mean, when I started, I used just a regular work light that I picked up from Lowe's for like 20 bucks. But over the years I've upgraded and what I use now is Aperture's Amaran Tri-8 series lights. It's a smaller LED panel light. They come with the soft box, the diffusion cloth. They're powered by AC, you can plug them in. They use NP batteries or there's a V-mount option. The 8S model is a solid color temperature of 5,500 Kelvin, but the 8C series can adjust from a range of 2,300 Kelvin to 6,800 Kelvin. You can adjust the color temperature and the brightness with the knob on the side, depending on what model you get. But I think one of my favorite features about this, this particular panel is they have a wireless remote, so I can turn off and on these lights just by pressing a button change the intensity and the color temperature right from here. So if I'm here by myself shooting, all I have to have is my remote in the hand and a little monitor and I can adjust my scene right here. I don't even have to get up. All right, Zach, thank you so much for your help, but I'll uh, take it from here. <laughs> there you have it, guys. A few uh, really easy techniques that you can use to really spice up your videos with just a single light. Just check the link in the description and hop on over to their Instagram page. Leave a like, a comment, give them a follow. It is because of their generosity that we get to do videos like this 
And if we keep doing stuff like this in the future, we might be able to uh, activate some really cool giveaways. So smack that like button, hit the subscribe if you aren't already with notifications on, and we will see you right back here next time.